This is lesson 8.5, which is linear, exponential, and quadratic models. Our essential question is, how can you determine whether a linear, exponential, or quadratic function best models data? So example one is from a table, determine which function type represents the data. So the first thing that we're going to look for is the first differences. So you're going to make sure, let's stick with, so you're going to make sure for the x's that you're going up by one each time, which we are. And so then we turn our attention to the y's. So we figure out to go from negative one to one, that's going up two. From going to one to three, that's also adding two. Three to five, adding two. And five to seven, adding two. So those are what we call the first differences. And, oops. Okay, so those are the first differences. So if they are all the same, if the first differences are constant, then this is a linear function. So the first thing you're going to check for is you're going to look at the y's and you're going to figure out if you're going up, up or down by a constant value each time. So if you are, then we call it a linear function. So we're going to do the same thing here. So I, notice I make sure the x's are all increasing by the same number so we can compare the y's. So let's look for the first differences like we did on the last one. So 3 plus 6 gives me 9. 9 plus 10 gives me 19. 19 plus 14 gives me 33. And 33 plus 18 gives me 51. So we can see that those first differences are not constant like they were on the last example. So that means this is not linear. So now let's look for the second differences. So the second differences, I'm going to take the difference between the first differences. So from 6 to 10, that's going up 4. From 10 to 14, that's going up 4. And from 14 to 18, that's going up 4. So you can see that the second differences are constant. So what that means is that this is a quadratic function. So again, if we have constant first differences, it's linear. If we find the first differences and they're not constant, but then we find the second differences and they are, then it is quadratic. So for our last one here, okay, again, I make sure the x's are going up by 1 each time, and they are. So now I'm going to check for first differences. So going from 1 to 2, that's up 1, up 2, up 4, up 8. So we can tell it's not linear, so it's not doesn't have a constant first difference. Then this is up 1, this is up 2. This is up four. So also the second differences are not constant. So this is not linear. It's not quadratic. So then the third thing I check for are the ratios constant. So the ratios, you're going to take your later x, and, or later y, sorry, and divide it by the earlier y. So we're going to say two divided by one, that's two. Four divided by two, is 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And 16 divided by 8, also 2. So the ratios in this case are constant. So if you have constant ratios, then this is exponential. So again, just to go over the three different types here. So constant first differences mean it's linear. Constant second differences mean it's quadratic. And constant ratios means that it's exponential. So those are the three types of functions that we've talked about throughout this whole entire year. 
So this kind of summarizes those different ideas. Okay, so our last example here says the graph shows the population models for three cities based on data over five year period. If the populations continue to increase in the same ways, when will the population of city C exceed the populations of the other two cities? So we can tell that city A is a linear function. I can tell by the equation, okay? And I can also tell by the graph since it's a line. City B is a quadratic function. And city C is an exponential function. So what we want to know is when will city C overtake the other two? So we have... Let me label these. So we have f of x, which is a. We have city b, which is g of x. And we have city c, which is h of x. And then I'm going to plug in some x values. So there's two ways we could go about this. We could do a table or we could graph it. So you could go to Desmos, type in desmos.com and you could type in each of these different equations and look to see where that third equation exceeds the other two graphs. Okay, that's one way. Another way is we can make a table. So I can see clearly on this graph that the, the green graph, our city C, is not going to overtake city A or city B on this graph. So my graph is going up to 6. So I'm going to start at, let's do 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So then I would plug that in. So I would take, for city A, I would take 3.2 times 7, and I get 22.4. Then I would get 25.6, 28.4, thirty two point zero and thirty five point two then I would go to city B which I type in point two five into my calculator point two five times and then the value like seven squared and so I get twelve point two five then sixteen point zero twenty point two five twenty five and 30.25. And then finally, we're going to plug in values into the x in city C. So 2 to the x minus 5. So we would get from 7, we get 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So we're looking for where does, I should use green, where does city C overtake the other two? So where does it exceed the other two? So you can see here at year 10, um, city C is equivalent to city A, but it's beating city B. And so we could say after 10 years. Because then at 11 years, you can see that clearly 64 is well over 35.2. So... City C after 10 years is going to be greater than the other two cities. Okay, so that is linear, exponential, and quadratic. 